Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar. We're going to get started right now. But before that, I want to let you know that audio is provided via the GoToWebinar app over the internet. So please enable your speaker in all places and the application has muted your microphone so I can't hear you. However, if you have any questions at any time, there is a questions tool at the right side of your screen. You can use this mechanism to ask me questions. Your questions will be read and answered if we have time. If not, I will send you an email with your answers after this webinar. So today we're going to talk about failure rate classification. Are your failures safe or dangerous? You can figure this out um, using the SCRH that is provided with Excellentia. There you're going to see for your sensors you have fail low, fail high failures, fail detected failures. What does this mean and how do you classify them? That is what we're talking about today. First I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Kate Hildenbrandt. I am a sales engineer here at Exida. Well, that means my role is to ensure customer success by providing training and application support for users of Excellentia and our other tools. For that reason, I put my email right here. If you have any questions about this webinar, about Excellentia, about our tools at all, you can feel free to email me directly with those questions. A little background on Exida if you are unfamiliar with our company. We are a leader in functional safety tools, consulting, and assessments. We believe the three of them together bring a deep knowledge and understanding to your project to help you achieve safety while optimizing your process. Exida is an ANSI accredited certification body for functional safety and cybersecurity. We have many active members on functional safety committees and we have locations globally to ensure that we can help you wherever you are at. So there are our locations. Today I'm going to talk about the different failure modes that you can have with an analog transmitter and then how you can uh, classify those failures depending on your application or how you configure your transmitter. Then I'm going to show you how Excellentia handles this classification. So let's dive right in. Here is a screenshot of our Safety Equipment Reliability Handbook. If you're, if you're familiar with Excellentia or our SCRH, you might be familiar with this data sheet. And what it is showing is the failure rates for a generic pressure transmitter. And what you'll find here is instead of classifying these failures as safe, dangerous, it is classifying them as fail low, fail high, fail detected, and fail dangerous undetected. And I am going to show you how these failure modes can be applied to your system and classified correctly. A little background, a microprocessor based analog transmitter is going to look like this. It's going to have a sensing element, a microprocessor, and an output circuit. The output gives a representation of the process value you're measuring in the form of four to 20 milliamps. So that measurement might be a pressure measurement, a temperature measurement, a flow or level measurement, any measurement type, but it's going to give that in the form of 4 to 20 milliamps. So as long in, as you are in that range of 4 to 20, you have a healthy signal. However, if you're over range or under range, you have an unhealthy transmitter signal, which often indicates a failure. So I'm going to go through the different ways that you can that your transmitter might fail internally and what that might look like. First, you might have a frozen output. In this case, the analog output is stuck at, for example, one value, let's say 12 milliamps. Regardless of the process measurement, the output will not change, which means that your safety instrumented function cannot respond to a hazard. We call this fail dangerous undetected. In most cases, that is what it's going to be classified as. In this case, you will not know that there's a failure because it's not out of range. And like I said, it's not following the process value anymore, so you can't respond to a hazardous scenario. In some cases, you might have 
let's say, external comparison, in which case this could be classified as a detected failure. However, in the SCRH, you're going to find these failures under failed, dangerous, undetected. Now, let's say your output goes over range. Your analog output goes above 20 milliamps. Regardless of the process measurement, your output will not change. So it's no longer following your pressure, temperature, flow, etc. The fault is not detected internal to the transmitter. This would be called a fail high. We don't know at this case without knowing your trip point if this is a safe or dangerous failure or if it's detected or undetected without knowing how your system is configured. We'll go into that later. Now let's say your output goes under range. Let's say it drops to below 4 milliamps. Regardless of the process measurement, the output will not change, so it's no longer following your process. The fault is not detected internal to the transmitter in this case. This is what we call a fail low. Again, we don't know if it's safe, dangerous, detected, or undetected yet, but we do know it can no longer respond to a hazardous scenario. In some cases, your output can go to a predefined fault point. So let's say a fault is detected by the transmitter. The transmitter can then be programmed to drive the output to a predetermined value. We call this fail detected. However, if it is classified as safe, dangerous, danger, uh, detected, or undetected, it depends on your application. And the reason is because we don't know yet if your logic solver knows that your transmitter detected a failure. I'll get into that more in a bit. The last failure mode is no effect, and in this case, an internal failure would cause a less accurate or noisy output. The signal is still following the process value, and it can identify a hazardous event, although it's less precise. We call this fail residual or no effect and this would not be applied to your PFD calculation. This can respond, again, to your hazardous scenario. It's not going to trip your plant or anything, and so therefore we would call it fail residual no effect. So those are the different failure modes you might find with an analog transmitter. How do we classify them? Again, how do we decide if they're safe, dangerous, or detected or undetected? First, let's define safe and dangerous. In this case, a safe, a safe failure is a failure that causes a false or spurious trip, causing the system to go to the safe state without the presence of a hazard, so a nuisance trip. A dangerous failure is a failure that pre prevents the SIF, or safety instrumented function, from performing its automatic protected function, and so it cannot respond to the hazard. There is no trip but your SIF is no longer functional, and you could have a dangerous event. Let's define the other ones, detected, undetected, and no effect. Failure modes can be classified as detected or undetected, and in this case, we're referring to detection by automatic diagnostics. You might also have no effect failures, which we went over. These are failures that have These are failures, excuse me, that um, do not keep your safety function from performing. They do not cause a false trip, and they are not preventing automatic diagnostics from following what's going on in your signal, and therefore, there are no effect failures. Again, these might be a little less accurate. However, they are not keeping you from responding to a hazardous event. So how do we apply these in your system? Well, again, your frozen output is very often dangerous undetected. You're not going to know that you have a, an unhealthy signal because it's still within the healthy range. And in this case, it is keeping your safety instrumented function from responding to the hazardous scenario. So it is dangerous and it is undetected. No effect we went over, that is a case where your signal is less accurate, perhaps it's noisy, but it's not keeping you from responding to the hazardous scenario and it's not tripping your plant. 
but the ones that we are unable to classify without knowing your system are fail high, fail low, and fail detected. For fail high, we don't know if it's safe or dangerous, detected or undetected. The same with fail low. With fail detected, your transmitter detects that you have an internal failure and it's driving your output either high or low, just like a fail high or fail low might. And so it follows the same concept depending on how you configure your system. Let me dive in a little deeper into this. Let's say your trip point is a high trip point. In this case, the output goes through the trip point for a fail high. This initiates vote for trip without a process demand or a hazard to your system. And so this is a safe failure. However, if you have a low trip, the output goes away from the trip point. This prevents the actual process value indication, and this is a dangerous failure. Your plant is not tripping, but your safety instrumented function can no longer respond to the hazardous scenario. What about the opposite? What about trip point fail low? Well, if you have a high trip, the output, go, the output goes away from the trip point, and again, it's preventing measurement of the actual process value and it's not tripping your plant, so it is a dangerous failure. However, if you have a low trip, your output is going through the trip point, it's initiating a trip without a hazard from the system, and so you're, ha you're tripping the plant, it's a safe failure. Some programmable transmitters allow the end user to predefine the output value in case of an internal detected failure. Again, this is the transmitter detecting that there is an internal failure. You can select if this failure drives the output under range or over range. Therefore, your fail detected failures will behave as your fail low or fail high failures based on this predefined output. Now, if you follow the Nemore standard, under range would be 3.6 milliamps and over range would be 21.0 milliamps. However, some manufacturers have it set where if you drive it under range, it goes to 3.75 milliamps and over range is 21.5 milliamps. This is depending on how, again, you configure your system. But your fail detected failures will behave just like your fail low or fail high depending on if you decide to drive it under range or over range. However, you have to keep in mind if your logic solver can detect the unhealthy transmitter signals. Modern PLCs can detect unhealthy transmitter signals. This will make the faults detected at the application level. However, if your logic solver does not know that your transmitter detected an internal failure, this would be classified as an undetected failure. And so this is something to look, look into. And then there's the impact of trip delay. So in, trip delays allow for a certain amount of time between fail high and plant trip to ensure the process value is healthy. If the value remains out of range, we know it is a transmitter issue and not a hazardous event. This would be a dangerous failure as the transmitter cannot detect a hazard and the plant is not tripping. So it, that is something to keep in mind and we will see how that is applied. What is the impact of the operating philosophy in your application? For low demand safety instrumented functions, users are allowed to continue to operate after a failure is detected as long as the failure is repaired within the assumed repair time. So if you continue to operate after an unhealthy transmitter signal is detected, that is a dangerous detective failure. But if you transition to the safe state after unhealthy transmitter signal is detected, that's safe detected. You're tripping the plant without a hazardous scenario present. There's a lot of different combinations here, depending on how you configure your plant, depending on if you have a high trip, if your transmitter fault direction is high or low, and what your PLC detection behavior is. Does it detect out of range signals? 
and have you implemented a trip delay. In this case, you can see how your fail low, fail high, and fail detected failures are actually classified. Dangerous, safe, detected, or undetected. Now that's pretty complicated and obviously it would be hard to memorize, although it's a good reference. So let's see how we can do sensor configuration selections in Excellentia. We would do this in the SIL verification tool in Excellentia, which we call Silver. So you can see that there. Now in Silver, what you're doing is you're choosing your equipment for each part of your SIF, your sensor, your logic solver, and your final element, but you're also indicating how it's going to be configured within your system. And so what I'm going to show is how you can do that for the sensor. Here you see a screenshot of the sensor group properties and what it's showing you is that we've chosen a generic pressure transmitter. For that generic pressure transmitter we have values for fail low failures, fail high failures, fail detected, and dangerous undetected failures. You can see all of those in black. Those come directly from our Safety Equipment Reliability Handbook, which is embedded in the tool. We have thousands of devices throughout the industry that you can simply choose from a drop-down list, and these failure rates are available right here. And then you see the blue failure rates, and these are taking the fail low, fail high, fail detected, etc., and classifying them according to how you configured your system. Well, how does it know? On this other side, you see the configuration options. Here, you see that we selected that this would be a high trip. That if there is an internal transmitter failure, the predefined action is to drive it under range. Here you can see that the PLC detection configuration is that over and under range signals are detected. We don't have any trip delay. And we say that no, not all alarms are voted as trip. You also see at the bottom we don't have any external comparison. So this is our sample problem basically and what you're seeing here is how the failure rates are classified according to this configuration. Well, let's dive a little deeper into that. You saw Excellentia's classification options. So let's go through each and see what it means. First, you have your transmitter option. Again, you can choose if it's a high or low trip. This is going to classify your fail high and fail low failures as safe or dangerous. Then you have what in Excellentia just says alarm. This is saying is an internal detected failure driving your signal over range or under range. If it's over range, then this failure will act just like a fail high. If it's under range, it's going to act as a fail low. And so this helps classify your dangerous detected failures from the SCRH as safe or dangerous as well. Then you have your PLC detection configuration. Here you're going to see if your PLC detects over and under range signals. You simply select on or off here. And this classifies failures as detected or undetected. Then you have what is listed as alarm filter. This is your trip delay. So you select on or off for if you have a trip delay or you don't. This is going to help classify your failures as dangerous, meaning there's no trip. So they can't be safe failures. And then you have alarm votes as trip. This is where if you have an unhealthy signal, it's simply going to trip the plant. And this would help classify your failures as safe since you're having a spurious trip without a hazard present. And the last option is ex external comparison. I mentioned this before, but if you have a separate transmitter signaling a separate PLC, you can compare the outputs of the transmitters to see if there's something wrong with the transmitter in your safety instrument and function. In this case, you might actually be able to detect frozen output failures. So usually you wouldn't know that it's frozen because it's 
in the healthy range. However, if the other transmitter that you're comparing to is showing different values, it might indicate a um, frozen output failure, and you can count that as detected. And so this is how Excellentia helps you to classify your failure rates. So let's go back to our sample problem. I'm starting here with the fail high failures. You can see the blue box around the fail high black failure rate. In this case, we've said that it's a high trip. That alarm is driving the signal under range. That the PLC is detecting any over or under range signals. This means that your high your fail high trips the plant, so it's a safe failure. And since your PLC is detecting any over or under range signals, it's detected. So you see that that 1.5 e to the minus 7 is applied to the safe detected area. Now, if you had chosen no, or I'm sorry, off for over or under range, meaning that your PLC cannot detect and the out of range signals, this would be under the safe undetected category. So that's how that would work. What about fail low? In this case, since we have a high trip, your fail low is going to be under the dangerous failure rates. It's classified as dangerous. But we know that our PLC can detect any out of range signal, so this would be dangerous detected. Now you see that the fail low is 4E minus 7, and dangerous detected says 5.5E minus 7. Well, what else is there? This is also how your fail detected failures would work. So because your alarm is dr driving any internal failures that the transmitter detects under range, it acts just like the fail low failures. In this case, it is not going past the trip point. It is not tripping the plant, and therefore it is a dangerous failure. However, since the PLC is going to detect anything over or under range, it is dangerous detected. So you have your 4e to the minus 7 plus your 1.5e to the minus 7, which make up your dangerous detected in blue, 5.5e to the minus 7. And then finally, you have your dangerous undetected failures, which because we have no external comparison are simply classified as dangerous undetected. However, these could be switched to the dangerous detected section if you have external comparison. So this is just one example of how these failure rates can be classified. If you have Excellentia, you can go in and choose different configurations and see how the failure rates are applied. And if you want any help with this, you can certainly email me. We can, um, we can do it together in a web meeting or um, in person if you really want to see how the, different class, how the different configurations will classify those failure rates. But I think this is a helpful example. And of course, the way these failure rates are classified will affect your results. So here I have a screenshot of the SIL verification results in our silver tool. And what you'll see is that you have your achieved safety integrity level for the entire SIF, your average probability of failure on demand, and your mean time to fail spurious. But you also have those results for each part of the SIF. And you can see in the sensor part, you have your PFD average and your mean time to fail spurious. The way your high, fail high, fail low, and fail detected failures are classified affects these values. And so it's good to understand exactly how the way you configure your system is affecting your SIL verification results. So that is, in a nutshell, what we're going to talk about today. If you want to know more, you can find us on Twitter at, at Exita LLC. If you have a suggestion for a webinar topic, please send it to academy at exita.com. We love to get your suggestions. We want to know that we are providing value to you by doing these webinars. And so anything you have a question about that you think would make a good topic, please let us know.
We also have a few courses coming up. We have FSC 211 in uh, Oak Ridge, Tennessee coming up in September. FSC 100 in Anchorage in October. We have FSC 104 in Stafford, Texas in October. And finally, we have FSC 100 online in December. You can get that online, which is great. Um, you can check out our full training schedule at www.exita.com slash training. If you're interested in anything there, there's a, there's a lot available, not just these four, so please take a look. And that is it for today. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me at khildenbrandt at exita.com. And I hope you have a nice day. Take care.